I'm pissed all I can. <laughs> How many liters do I got left? Liters? Two more. I got two more liters of piss I gotta give him, and he won't get out of here until. <laughs> DK, my guy, but you sound like a fucking suck a dick. Come back in six hours, I'll give you two more. Two more what? Liters? Milliliters? Sorry, DK. Why is that? I don't know if you train with him or not, but uh, Shavkat Rachmana, uh, did you ever get a chance to work with him? I know he's a welterweight, but he's still a pretty big guy for the weight class. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, yeah, I moved with him uh, a couple times. Uh, it's amazing how this guy is just, he's so relaxed, calm, and good everywhere, you know. I try to, to do my thing, just pressure him and make him un uncomfortable, but it never happens. It, it, he always has the, the you know, the, the answer for everything. And I think he's, uh, you know, he's one of a kind. So, uh, yeah, I'm very uh, happy to have him uh, okay. in the team. What have you made of Curtis Blades in the division? Uh, I know he won against Tom Aspinall. There was an injury involved. But what do you make of Curtis in the division? Do you see him as an interesting fight because he's got really good wrestling? Oh. Yeah, he's a really great fighter, and for me, like I say, like in my debut in my career, for me, uh, he's one of the best guy fighter in the MMA division since maybe uh, three, four, five years ago. So uh, yes, probably yes, a matchup against him is going to be a big fight. Yeah, you know, Francis' power speaks for itself. Um, and, you know, he's showing that he's becoming a much more well-rounded uh, fighter. His, his fight against Gon shows that um, his ability to go five rounds, his ability to use his wrestling, his clinch game, and his kicks, um, and his growth uh, that we've seen out of uh, his time in Extreme Couture. Um, and then he always has that X-Factor power that is... Uh, you know, it's hard to prepare for, right? You cannot make any mistakes against Francis. And John's one of those guys that does not make mistakes. So, with all that said, I think John is a very hard fight for anybody to be prepared for. Um, and out of his 15 title victories, I think he's really shown his cardio, his pace, his resiliency, and, and his technique in all areas. And I think he's going to be even more dangerous. I promise you that. That's what keeps us coming back for more is this is the only yep. sport, this is the only spectacle on the planet where somebody could be so far down and out, the score is so stacked against them, and they can pull out one play or one move to bring them back from the jaws of defeat to pull off the win and and in, in, in the in the commentators had him all but written off. DC was was oh. writing obituary at that point, like, "Hey, this guy's done. He's just trying to get to the end of the fight." And then, of course, my man John Anik slides in with a, "Hey, Leon Edwards ain't cut from that cloth. He's not here just to go the distance like Rocky Balboa." Leon Rocky Edwards was there to win the fight with a minute left. He just fires off that beautiful left head kick, oh. mash behind the left straight, a strike that I was surprised I didn't see him throw earlier on in the fight. I think that, you know, I was really surprised first, obviously way before the head kick, just the transaction in that first round when he when he got the takedown, the outside trip, gets this nice chair sit, seatbelt, he's, he's got the back of the champ, something we don't see the first time Kamaru's ever been taken down in his UFC career. But it's like just, he's a, he's a nut, he's a nut. You know, and, and this is the thing where I feel like Luke, especially, you know, we know how MMA fans can be pretty hard on him for those last few losses. Um, in a Sick, lot of man, people, that got I bloody. The chin, the desire, Tell you the, the truth, man, I thought Luke Rock Rocko had like, that, and, and, and I thought he had that one. He won back the hearts of so many fans because he literally went out.
out there and laid it all on the line. The guy was absolutely exhausted. And look, I know Luke on a very personal level. I know he trained hard. I know he was in good shape. I'm not even going to bring up the altitude thing again. I'm sure you know where I can go with this. But the guy was so exhausted and exasperated. Hands on his knees. And the next thing he pop him up, he would like to be. His professor is still, uh, well, she drew some fruit for us guys. He's got some fruit. Some very nice if you're cutting weight, if you're cutting weight, don't look at this one, Michael. Oh, that looks nice. Is that a Shirley Temple? That'd be my guess. For you uh, artsy people out there that like your art a little bit more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Richie, you might be able to help me out. Uh, what's, what's the word? Abstract. Joe Dewey. Like, I almost feel like he purposely goes and puts this suit on just to be ridiculous. Like, Joe, it looks like, it looks like somebody tied your tie 10 years ago, and you just don't want to have to figure it out again. So no, you know, it's like sliding on and on. Slide it on, and on. I'll let you go first. What's, what are some sandwiches or a recent sandwich where you just, I mean, you wanted to do nasty, dirty things to that sandwich? I am a glutton. I you love it. So if I get a taste of something it. that I haven't had, I don't want it again. So this actually happened recently when I did one. I, I, I